Well, hello again. I'm up on my hill today wearing my awesome straw hat to keep me out of the sun. And I'm working on the site of our future new home. Now, I've got to take you back in time because it's been a while since I've posted anything about this project. And I'll get you up to date of how I got to this point, and then I'll show you where I'm at today. Well, I have a new project. It's not a violin or a little bungalow, but I'm up on the hill. Finally excavating for our future home. Well, good morning. I'm up on the hill here. And I have finished excavating with the backhoe. And what Kimberly and I have been doing is preparing the forms for our concrete slab. This is going to be a walk-in basement type with just a first floor above it. You can get a little better idea of the shape from up here. The edges of the slab will be thicker and reinforced with rebar. The size right now is 28 by 34. Well, it's another breezy day up here on the hill. As you can see behind me, I've already stubbed out some pipes for my plumbing, a downstairs bathroom, I've got a water line coming up, and you'll see the gray conduit for the electrical hookup. I've been raking out and leveling this three-quarter inch crushed gravel to bring me up to grade and give me good drainage. This slab is surrounded by a bed of crushed gravel and inside that crushed gravel is a nice large drainage pipe. I'm not really expecting any extra water but Better be safe than sorry. We're almost done with the forming of the footings and the floor. I have this corner to finish up and we'll be ready to pour concrete. Most everything has gone fairly well up here. I did have one little oopsie yesterday. I had to leave this spot open as an access point to carry in all this gravel. And then yesterday I had to hand dig this trench and boy, the ground was compacted fairly well. And I was searching for this pipe and I struck it pretty good with the pickaxe. Fortunately, that two inch line I cracked is just a protective casing I installed over the water line and boy did it do its job. I've done a lot of digging since you saw me last. I've run the conduit here to the power box and I've trenched a water line all the way down there. I've got to get back to my slave labor over here. I single-handedly shoveled and raked two dump truck loads of gravel the past two days. I'm going to finish up this corner and then I'll update you when something interesting happens. Well, today's the day. I've been waiting quite a while to get my concrete delivered. Spring is a busy season here. Everything is laid out. We've got rebar in place. We're plumbed. I've excavated a little bit where the lally columns will be to thicken the concrete in those areas for support. 
I'm really excited. The concrete truck is on the way here and we'll finally get this phase of the project completed. Well, today I'm up here and I'm working on the walls for my foundation. I'm using an alternative approach to foundation building because I can't do anything like everybody else. And let me show you what I'm up to. You can see I have had some blocks delivered. I got myself an old cement mixer for $175 and I've started adding blocks to my slab. The method I'm using involves mortaring the first course of blocks and then we're actually going to dry stack the wall. And then we'll coat our wall both sides with this product. We placed rebar sticking up every six feet around the entire perimeter of our slab. Once the wall is erected and coated both sides with the quick wall, where those pieces of rebar are located, we'll add a long piece of rebar and then we'll fill all those holes to make a column of concrete reinforced with rebar and that wall will be tremendously strong and then once I get the first floor attached we can backfill and fill in around this foundation. This is my Harbor Freight well pump and it certainly doesn't look big enough to do much of anything. I needed to be able to pump water from way down there over that hill and get it all the way up this hill to here. When I started planning this project, I realized I was going to have to get water about 200 feet up from my spring house just to get up here to this slab. And then of course I need to feed the house with sufficient water to have a shower and run a faucet and a washing machine. Well that created some problems. So I looked at enormous submersible pumps like you would use for deep wells and such. Well the pumps weren't that hard to find. They were expensive. But I'm limited by the pressure I can run through my black water pipe, which is good for, I think, 120 PSI. And I would be running about that to get it up here. Well, I discovered piggybacking or running pumps in series. I can use a smaller pump down the bottom of the hill that feeds the bungalow. And that puts out about 55 PSI right now. That will just get water here. It'll dribble out the pipe. Well, I added this nice little three-quarter horse well pump that can suck up 25 feet. When this baby kicks on, creates suction, lowering the head of water for that guy down there. He kicks on, that guy kicks on as the pressure drops, and they work together in series. They use less electricity, and I have an amazing supply of water up here. Just thought I'd throw it out in case you ever decide to run water up a big hill. Well, here is where I am today. Well, 
Well, that's it for this little update video. See you next time. It's the simple things that are the most precious. can't buy that, not even with a million dollars.